Thank you, and good morning, everyone. Um, as perhaps some sort of a surprise, I'm not going to tell you about ArcWork this time, but you can, if you're interested in the network, so please come and talk to me uh, when we have a break sometime later today. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do today, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, shift a little bit focus from data uh, to, to that thing that uh, many people are not probably very happy about uh, called parodata. But what it's, uh, uh, we don't have to kind of focus too much on, on the different concepts and, and what to call different things uh, here. But, but the thing that I'm interested in is really uh, the archaeological information work. What archaeologists do with information and uh, when and how. And then the question is how to capture it, how to document it, how to make it uh, visible, how to make it understandable for other people. And uh, this is precisely what, uh, what we're going to uh, try to uh, figure out uh, as a part of the uh, project called Capture, uh, or a little bit more words if you want to spell it out. And uh, the understanding of what the uh, paradata would be, what the documentation of data uh, would be, what the documentation of archaeological things that, uh, that we find, is and how it could be done, and especially uh, a better understanding on, 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 on the work that is actually being conducted uh, in field, in laboratories, in different places where archaeology is taking place. This uh, question kind of stems uh, from my uh, longer interest in, in what happens when, uh, on, on one hand, people create data or information. It could be the same thing, but they the thing could be called with different names, depending on, on what kind of a purpose the, the creation, the making has. And then on the other hand, we have other people, or maybe the same person that comes and tries to use that data or information, maybe at a later stage, or with a li di little bit different kind of an uh, idea in his or her mind about how this information, how this data could be useful. And uh, during lately, I've been trying to kind of uh, somehow make sense of the landscape that kind of something is being made and left somewhere and then somebody else comes and takes it. Uh, so it's a kind of a process of information making and information taking and then trying to figure out what different aspects, what, what different things play out uh, in this uh, kind of a process that's not really a process. There is no information process but it's more like uh, there's a huge gap that's uh, still some sort of a continuum because of the efforts of the people uh, explicitly or implicitly trying to uh, make uh, their contributions, either the making or the taking, understandable for others. If this uh, thing is, is kind of taken to the uh, uh, context of, of research data and, and production of creation of, of, of it, so it's, it's precisely the question of the same thing. There is a we produce data, we create research data at some, time, some point. Uh, we use f certain kinds of methods to capture it uh, and, and, and to kind of produce the data. Then uh, it's left somewhere, maybe on a hard drive, maybe in an archive, uh, depending on, in, on, on what kind of a format the data is in. And then it's, it's used at a later, at a later date. Or in, as in most of the cases, it isn't really used because not, not that many people are interested in it, even if we have high hopes that uh, people actually would be reusing data uh, to a larger extent, and it's happening, but not really to an extent that uh, many people would probably like it to happen. And uh, there is, of course, uh, an important part of the thing is the data itself, and uh, that's what is being created, and that's what, uh, what is being uh, hopefully reused at some point. But then there is also the question of, of paradata uh, or the data about uh, processes, quite simply. And the rationale with the idea is, is simply that uh, if we have uh, data, this could be whatever. If we have metadata about this data, so the metadata could tell us that th these are distances between, let's say, different archaeological sites. Okay. Uh, more metadata, the distances are in kilometers instead of miles even more useful maybe, uh, but uh, if we don't really know how the distances were measured and, and where they come from, uh, what kind of uh, intellectual process lies behind of put, pulling together this kind of a bunch of distances, uh, 
we can't really use uh, this data that well. We have to know whether it was kind of tape measured, 3,453 kilometers between two archaeological sites. Uh, if we know that it was tape measured, so we can say that it's probably not very accurate. Um, then we probably need to know also about kind of what, what the process was, who was measuring when, why, where, well, what was the purpose of the, of the data gathering. And uh, as a kind of a starting point for the project, uh, um, uh, our hypothesis uh, is that uh, you can find Paradata at least in three different places. Um, first of all, uh, you, there are obviously uh, explicit descriptions about uh, that kind of count as Paradata. We have uh, notebooks, as we, ha as we know after, if we didn't know before, so we n now we know after, after the talks uh, given uh, yesterday afternoon with very uh, uh, insightful uh, descriptions and, and analysis of, of what, what's kind of actually in the notebooks. There is also earlier literature uh, analyzing uh, 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 archaeological field notebook, notebooks to a certain extent uh, that, uh, that discusses precisely the, this issue. But it's, it's descriptions. We write down what's happening, and, uh, and that's, kind of, that's really data about processes. Then this uh, process has been tried to, uh, we have been trying to digitize it uh, in a sense and uh, when we have a, an iPad or we have another, um, another uh, digital system, uh, so the, the kind of the white page of the field notebook book, book is, is being kind of somehow digitalized in a sense uh, that it, it becomes a white box uh, in, a, in a database. And this is of course, uh, quite useful, but this isn't awfully welcoming way of, of, kind, of uh, kind of asking people to write something. Um, it might sound uh, and might look uh, not very welcoming way of, of kind of that, okay, here I'm, I'm going to write my big thoughts about many different kinds of things. And the general problem with the white boxes is that uh, people are not kind of filling out these forms uh, uh, very comprehensively when it comes to uh, describing the uh, processes and, and what they are actually working with. Then uh, there is uh, how you can uh, add to this is that uh, it's not only that you self-write down what you are doing, but you can of course uh, invite somebody else to take a look at, at what, uh, what is happening. And there are good examples of archaeological ethnographies where Either archaeologists or ethnographers or archaeologist ethnographers have been uh, been looking at, at how archaeology is being done, uh, either a self-standing project, but, uh, but then also a, as a part of, of several research initiatives. And maybe, perhaps, in a way, even an archaeologist could work as, an, as doing some sort of self-ethnography. Okay, I, I'm not going to debate this with uh, ethnographers because I'm probably I don't have a very good argument and, and I don't uh, put my words in a right way to, to make the argument, but in a way having this kind of an ethnographic anthropological uh, uh, gaze to one's own work, it could be a way to maybe dig a little bit deeper in, in, the, in, in understanding and describing what, uh, what I am kind of really doing when I'm, I'm doing stuff. Then there is a whole lot of automatically gathered data, whether it will be in Swedish or in English. Uh, coming from different types of digital devices, and as uh, um, Paul Riley and colleagues uh, quite interestingly noted, that there is also a lot of this kind of automatically gathered paradata in drawings, in photographs. Uh, we can see many different things there. We can see uh, traces of, of how things were done, uh, how people were using trouble uh, when they were cleaning uh, a surface uh, uh, of, uh, of a stratum. Uh, in photos, we can see tools lying. Okay, I know that there is this kind of a thing that when, when you take a photo, so you'd, you should be kind of cleaning it and take out of your stuff away so that it kind of looks good and it looks clean and it looks kind of scientific somehow. But still, there are tools lying around. Then there are pictures about of the team, and we can see whether they are having swimming trunks or whether they have uh, what kind of clothes, what kind of. Uh, 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 tools they are, they are using, what kind of instruments. And that's, that's also, that's telling us something about uh, how the process looks like. Then uh, 
there is, of course, uh, the, the third option is to look at the data itself, because data reveals uh, something of how it was done. If there is only pottery shards and nothing else, it can be a sign of that, okay, nothing else was found, but it can also be a, a sign of that, uh, that the people either didn't recognize any other artifacts or that they weren't interested in, in any other kinds of artifacts. We can also see the size of uh, object retrieved. We can see uh, uh, what is being, what, what kinds of maps were drawn, and, and that tells always something about the process. And there's much more, but then the question is that uh, how, if we want this paradata to be, uh, or this data about the process, about the, the information work to be somehow useful, the question is that what kind of data is crucial and helpful? We could gather how much data we could document forever, uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, it would be somehow proportionate to the effort and that it would actually make the uh, information or the data uh, more useful. And. Uh, this is kind of an argument to why it's so important that we are here and we're talking about archaeological practices and, and, uh, and documenting and understanding them. But, uh, and uh, why it's necessary, so it's, it's necessary uh, because otherwise the documentation that is being produced, it's not going to be very useful. It can be a little bit useful, but it's not going to be very useful. But then the obvious, obvious questions that we have been uh, discussing here at this conference and, and we have been discussing as a part of the work of ARC work uh, is that uh, kind of what and, and where are the practices or things that count uh, and how they look like and, uh, and what is really uh, the thing that's Im important and interesting with them. And uh, coming back to this picture, so, so we can, as I have kind of sort of trying to be uh, doing, is to try to find out things that are pertinent uh, to the practices and to the kind of uh, passing over or making and taking of the data. And it could be the making itself and the dis distribution of responsibility and privileges in the process. Uh, the, the fact that people don't usually do what they think they do and what they say that they do, uh, they do something else. Uh, then also the documentation itself and what kinds of genres. Lisa talked about uh, reports as, an, uh, as a very specific kind of a genre. And it plays a big role in, in, in the process that how the documentation will look like and what will be documented and how it will be documented. But uh, then it's, uh, you could say that kind of the shifting ground is it's, it's kind of these different issues that uh, affect the practices. But I would actually kind of say that the shifting ground is, is actually, it's kind of there, it's in the middle. And it's the practices themselves that are shifting. And that's, uh, that's really, really kind of the issue. And uh, it's what the information or the data maker is doing, what the information taker or the data taker is, is doing. And, uh, it's really kind of what hap what's happening when we take instruments, we look at things, what he does, what, what, uh, what he does. And uh, it's not that this has to be a kind of a, a huge distance between uh, uh, people living in very different kinds of contexts in different parts of the world in different times, whether it will be in, in the end of the 18th century or 19th century or, or kind of today or 100 years from now uh, forward. But it's, it's really that uh, it's the question of uh, that the practice is what, what, we're really do, what people are really doing, what I am doing. I don't necessarily understand it well enough. Uh, and, and I don't understand what the guy next to me is doing. And, uh, and the, the guy next to me isn't understanding what I'm doing. OK, I could probably refer to you and me, not to those guys there. But uh, it's still the question that, uh, that the practice is. Uh, now, now, this is a kind of a, yeah, well, a uh, funny kind of a quote, but, but in a sense that uh, we could kind of think that the practices are really the, the kind of the foreign country, whether they are kind of my practices or your practices. And it's not kind of they who do things differently, and we have to kind of worry about that, that kind of you uh, who I don't know and, and you who is working in a very different place or very different kind of a context is doing things differently. But I should be worried about that, that kind of the guy next to me is doing things very differently, or I am myself doing things very differently uh, in comparison to, to what I might need to know and, and what, I'm, what kind of data I might need in the future, 
of the precise the, the work I've been doing myself. And uh, yeah, um, this is more like a question than an answer to, 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 the, to the real point that kind of what might uh, need to be done and, and a kind of a real understanding of, understanding of these practices, whatever they are, and how different and, and how, uh, how uh, foreign they would be for us. Um, and, uh, but uh, that's really something that uh, we're trying to figure out during the next four and a half years or so. Uh, I'm not uh, precisely quite sure whether, uh, uh, and I know that it, it, th there is no answer really to kind of, uh, that there would be a perfect way to capture all the practices, to document them in, in a way that would fit everybody. But whether, whether there would be some sort of uh, uh, ways to, to kind of uh, go uh, forward and, and to try to figure out at least some things, some small things that could be done to make uh, things more understandable, uh, something that would make the data more uh, takeable uh, for the people who come and uh, would like to use it, would need to use it in the future. And uh, if you're interested in, in questions like these, so you might want to uh, uh, stay tuned uh, with what uh, we are doing and, uh, and uh, say that, no, you are not doing anything that, that really makes sense and, and it would take the question uh, uh, forward or, or solve anything or, or that uh, this doesn't uh, really make any sense what, what you're proposing. Uh, at least that, that would be very helpful for us. And uh, just as a kind of a small uh, piece of marketing, so there will be a survey study next year, uh, and you all will be um, hearing about that. I'll, be make, I'll make sure that, that you will, uh, for you and for all of your colleagues. And then there is also an, uh, a nice round table session at the next CAA 2020 conference in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, all, all of you who would like to be a part of it, so please um, come and say hello to me so I can include you in the, uh, in the nice group that we're uh, going to gather. But um, so far, so good. And uh, maybe after four years, I can tell you more about what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Isto. Uh, does anyone have any, any questions for him? It's not really a question, is to. I'm just uh, responding to your last uh, uh, slide. Um, I will be very happy to give you information work from uh, uh, Upper Morgado Shelter from Portugal, if you if you are willing to. Thank you very much, Professor. And good morning, I'm sorry. Yes, hi, I'm Marcos Katskanis from Patras University. Um, thanks for the presentation, very interesting. And um, because m some of the things are really occupying myself as well, and from what I've uh, come to realize is that nowadays, um, information sort of or data data don't are not really steady <clears throat> they are transformed and what is data in one stage it's para data in another stage and in a sense this is uh, quite um, um, how can i say it? changes the way that we could actually even try to approach this kind of situation. So how, how is your, um, your feeling or your ideas on, on that, on this shifting kind of understanding of data from production to transformation to reuse to archiving to, I don't know, what you assembled? Part of the process. Uh, that it changes all the time and it has to be 
taken into account, and that's kind of one reason why it would be really important to try to keep uh, uh, information, try to keep uh, un an understanding of, of what is going on and what has been done with the data uh, uh, in, in different stages uh, together with the data. But in a sense, I, I do definitely agree that it's, it's, a, it's really a question that we can have a one thing, and it can be data for somebody, it can be paradata for someone else, and it can be information for, for, a, for a third person. And then it shifts in time what, uh, for one person, and it shifts in time and it shifts depending on, on the context and the uh, tasks, uh, the work that, uh, that you're doing, uh, that kind of what is this particular thing for you. And, uh, that's kind of, it, it requires some sort of an openness when, when we're managing stuff so that we will be managing all of those possible things at the same time and don't think that this is kind of, because this is data for me, it's data for everybody and I don't have to care about uh, it being useful as information or paradata. Thank you. Uh, Kostas Papadopoulos, Maastricht University. Um, there have been several attempts to, um, you know, discuss parade data. For example, you know, in 3D visualization, you know, the London Charter, Seville Principles. Mm -hmm. But I think these are all have been not so successful attempts in regards to, you know, being taken over by researchers and employing the principles they suggest in order to capture parade data. Why do you think is that? Is it that the, the kind of principles they developed were too onerous? They were asking too much? You know, uh, researchers, in a way, we cannot figure out what is useful to capture, what we should leave behind. What, what's your thoughts on that? I would say kind of the, the, uh, probably the main problem is that, uh, that many things that have been suggested uh, they have been being too onerous in, in comparison to what uh, researchers who were supposed to be following those guidelines, what they think that would be useful and necessary. And then, uh, especially when it comes to 3D data, Paradata has been to, uh, uh, discussed also in other contexts, for, for instance, in survey research, uh, kind of a social science survey research. Uh, but in, in, especially in this 3D discussion, so kind of a, there are these principles, what should be done, but then uh, when, when it can, kind of comes down to the level, that what, what kind of should be done in practice. So uh, there is the white box, and then uh, kind of the, all the paradata, what, what, how, how it should be managed or how it should be produced is that you should kind of write your paradata in the white box. And uh, if you don't think that it's, uh, it's really important uh, to document and you don't really understand what it's uh, all about, you think that it's, it's additional work that doesn't really help you and your colleagues, and then you just have a white box uh, nothing is really going to happen. So that's why I, I think that uh, kind of the, the principle that we have to follow is really to try to minimize the extra work to uh, researchers, to the producers of the data, and then at the same time try to uh, uh, kind of uh, be very clear why we are asking you to write down these specific things explicitly, why, you, why, why we can't kind of get this extremely important information from somewhere else.